this is the last of them. All of them appear to be almost perfectly flat, which is good. All six records. No signs of any physical blemishes. They seem perfect, which is a good thing. guys welcome back to the channel and what I have today is something I'm really rather excited about I just got in FedEx delivered this analog productions remaster of uh, Jano Starper's interpretation of box uh, cello suites of the uh, unaccompanied um, um, suites for cello a solo cello and uh, I've actually had this hasn't been on order, but I had to put you know my, my email address and name down um, on a wait list to see whenever this was going to come back into stock, and it finally did. It only took a year, so um, uh, I'm excited to have it, and I uh, thought I'd kind of go over some of the elements of what's in the box. There are a total of six LPs in this set. They're 45 RPM, and they are pressed on 180 gram of vinyl. All of the... Um, of the sleeves, all the gate folds are all kind of look this way. You can see this one has a number one on it and if you open the inside of it it shows what the content of it is. A photo of, um, of Mr. Starker and then obviously each, uh, you know, the two, the two records that are in each of the gate folds. They look like this, kind of like the old Mercury stereo label. Um, there's a lot of dead wax on this because it is 45 RPM, so there'll be a lot of getting up and flipping. I'll probably wind up putting all of this on tape now, um, since um, one thing I can't stand is having to get up every 10 minutes or less uh, to flip a, a, a vinyl record over. So, so that is what um, came in the box. Obviously, it has this insert. You know, all, all three of the, um, of, the, of the vinyl records go in here and then into the into the box. But there's some interesting things that came in it, and one of them is this reproduction of a press release from uh, Mer Mercury Classical News. And this is actually from some a woman named um, Charlotte Gilbert, and she sent this memorandum out to all classical radio station librarians, program planners, classical reviewers about a new release. And obviously the release is, is uh, Jenna Starker's um, um, uh, 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 Bach uh, cello suite. So, it's really quite interesting. I thought it was a nice touch just to put that in there. And she goes on to describe, you know, uh, how um, the, the experience of it was. She she was present uh, at the studio when when all of the, these recordings were made, apparently in 1965 around that time. I'd actually always thought that that these were done in the late 1950s, and and that was my mistake. All right. So there's one thing that I always have a question about whenever we're dealing with these new reissues that keep coming out and especially expensive ones like this at, at $195 uh, you want to know kind of you know if, if, if possible what am I getting alright and so inside uh, all of the packaging is uh, this insert um, and on the back it has some photographs of the engineers and and so forth and and this is the statement that I found was interesting and I wanted to share with you okay uh, on here it says the first generation half inch tape masters were used for this reissue just as with the original release a three to two channel mix was made directly to the cutting lathe for this reissue no cutting master tape stage digital source or digital delay was used Mastering supervisor Thomas Fine, Fine made the three to two mix with mastering engineer Ryan K. Smith at Sterling Sound's new facility in Nashville, Tennessee. Smith manually controlled the groove margin and depth on his Newman VMS-80 lathe, working with no preview signal and bypassing the lathe's pitch control computer. In doing so, he cut these sides the same way as the original LP was cut by George Pyros as with as with the original LP, no sweetening equalization or dynamic range control was used. 
So that's pretty much a direct statement as far as I'm concerned as to the providence of, of these releases. They're a, 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 a true analog to analog um, um, reissue, which is, you know, that's what I was hoping for, that's what I was expecting. You know, I don't want to get into the whole thing about what happened with Mobile Fidelity and the digital steps that they had finally had to admit that they had been using for quite a number of years. Um, um, but at any rate, these seem to be um, all, all analog. And uh, by the way, on the back of the um, outer case is a nice um, photograph of, of what the original tape box looked like, um, I guess, when they received it from the studio to start this project. So um, that kind of is what's in here. I actually became aware of, of, of this um, music by this gentleman um, by when I acquired this um, uh, this one album that he had originally did that uh, these were uh, suites number um, um, two and five um, this was done um, way back uh, in the 1960s I, I guess and and so um, I was uh, very uh, very very much impressed by the quality of his playing and the quality of how well this sounded so there have been a lot of or, or a number of other artists who have, who have done um, you know the, the cello suites from Yo-Yo Ma uh, and, and then more recently, a, a gentleman by the name of Zul Bailey for Octave Records did a wonderful, uh, full, uh, uh, unaccompanied suites. Uh, that's a, I have that on a, on a two uh, SACD set, and you can really tell in each of these interpretations from you know uh, uh, Jana Starker's generation, uh, then twenty some odd years later, uh, the Yo Yo Ma's interpretation, and then much, much later uh, to, to this uh, the younger artist in, in Zul Bailey and his interpretation. So uh, for those of you who might not be aware of or know anything about uh, Mr. Starker, I thought I'd give you just a quick um, a little rundown on his, him and his life. Uh, he was born on July the 5th in 1924 in Budapest, Hungary. He had two brothers who were also violinists. Uh, he was gifted a cello at age six, and he studied at the Franz Litz Academy in Budapest um, uh, until he was 14 years old, he made his first uh, professional debut. After World War II um, uh, was finally over, in 1946, he was able to get out of Hungary. He went down to Vienna in Austria um, and performed there. Uh, stayed, I think, in that area for a while, and eventually he managed to immigrate to the United States. Uh, once he was here, he um, was the uh, principal cellist for the Dallas Symphony. Uh, I think he was also the principal cellist for the uh, Metropolitan um, opera orchestra, orchestra, opera orchestra, and then lastly, uh, principal cellist at the Chicago Symphony. In 1958, he left the symphony and uh, went out on his own to do, pursue a solo career. And I think what really helped him as well is at that time, uh, the Indiana University School of Music offered him a teaching position, which he accepted and stayed and taught at that university until his death um, on April the 28th of 2013. So I'm, I'm crediting allmusic.com for a lot of that information. I'll put a, a link in the description below if you want to go read a whole lot more about him uh, there. Now, as far as the, the cello suites themselves are concerned, uh, these were written around 1717 uh, during what was called Bach's Cothin period. Uh, the suites comprised an um, exceedingly small part of Bach's overall uh, very large volume of, of, of compositions. Um, during the 17th century, uh, they were generally, these types of suites were generally consisted of four pieces, um, what they call the allemande or the vigorous, but sort of an easy motion. And these are, these are Mr. Starker's interpretations of it, uh, not mine, all right? Uh, the courante, uh, measured haste with dignity and elegance, the saraband, uh, grave but majestic walk, and the, I'm hatcheting this word, um, uh, the gouge, uh, uh, freest of all, a, a fancy free motion. Uh, the suites, uh, I think, are open to a lot of various interpretation, and primarily, I think, the reason is, is because um, uh, Bach did not leave behind, or, or, or it has been lost in time, any actual manuscript that was his manuscript uh, towards um, uh, how there, you know, there, there are just no real reference points for uh, indicating dynamics, tempi, and only a few markings for phrasing. And I think that's, easy, that's, that's very easily experienced when you listen to uh, his interpretation of the suites versus what Yo-Yo Ma did originally in 83, and I think they did CD sets for it in 97 was the one I have. And then this newer, younger artist, uh, Zul Bailey, uh, who recorded his uh, unaccompanied suites for, for cello um, at Octave Records up in, in that, I think that's a PS Audio uh, uh, 
company that, that's one of their their um, enterprises that they have going on and that was done up in Boulder in 2021 so that one's extremely recent and I'm pretty sure that those essay CDs are probably still available as well I'll, I'll try to link in on, on the description below um, all of all, all of those other releases and where they may uh, be available at so I've already put these um, on the um, turntable to check them for physical appearance flatness make sure there was no you know defects that just just jump right out at you and everything seems to be absolutely perfect with these so I'm really really happy about that um, I will come back and give some impressions after I've had a chance to listen to them um, you know just to, just to see uh, uh, what I think about them and at the very end of this um, I'm going to show you my handheld uh, selfie stick sort of botched effort at unboxing all of this um, so at any rate um, hope you enjoyed it Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell notification if you can. Comment, and if you know of any other artists that have produced these suites that you particularly like, uh, please let me know, and, uh, and I'll share that with, with everyone. So, uh, look forward to seeing you again soon, and uh, that's a wrap for today. Okay, after a wait of nearly a year, the day has finally arrived. It's the most expensive record that I have ever purchased to date, so... Came in this morning, and I'm going to open this box, and we're going to take a look and see exactly what it is that I have ordered. Knife. Let's just get started. Cut right here, like so. And it's over, I guess. And come down here. knife Let's set it aside okay go back this way cardboard very nice invoice so what we have is an analog productions remaster of Jano Starker's box suites, um, box, uh, cello suites, suites for unaccompanied cello. So this is, it's heavy, um, six, six, um, six final records, and I'm going to open this up and we're going to see what we have.